Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be giving you a beginner's guide to Open Office Writer, which is a text-based editor. It's similar to Microsoft Word. It allows you to create text documents such as a company letterhead. So the first thing you need to do is download Open Office. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do that. You're going to go onto the internet and I'm using Firefox. You're going to go to Google and type in Open Office and then you can click on this link here Apache Open Office which is at openoffice.org and when you click on the link you're going to say that you want to download Open Office and you're going to click on this green bar it's going to take you to another website which is SourceForge this is where all the files are stored and if you wait for the timer to tick down it will give you the option to save the file here this little pop-up will, will appear um, you can just save the file, it's 137 megabytes, so it takes a bit of time to download but once you've downloaded it, install the application as you'll install any other application you download from the internet and then you should be good to, good to go uh, if any reason this pop-up doesn't show, you can click on this little direct link here and that will also give you access to the software to save so once you've saved it, get the software installed, it's pretty straightforward and then you'll be able to launch OpenOffice now I'm running Windows 8 so on my Windows 8 computer I've got OpenOffice Writer here. If you can't see OpenOffice on your start menu here on this start tiles then you need to click on this little drop down arrow and you'll find OpenOffice located in here within your application list. So that's just another way to access OpenOffice Writer. You can see Calc is here and OpenOffice Writer is here. I happen to um, pin that particular icon to my start menu and I've done another tutorial, a beginner's tutorial for Windows 8 so you should go and watch that if you want to work out how to do all these tiles and organize them all you should do that. On Windows 7 you'll find the application on the start menu Windows 8 doesn't have that anymore but if you click on the start menu on your Windows 7 computer then you'll find OpenOffice listed there as well in your all program section. So to, I'm going to go ahead and launch OpenOffice Writer and the layout and the design of OpenOffice is a bit different to Microsoft Office. I would say that this layout is very similar to the older version of Microsoft Office and the newer version of Microsoft Office has a different type of style and design in terms of how you access all the different components of the application itself. Um, but you know, it's, this is just a beginner's tutorial so we're going to go through some basics of this OpenOffice writer application. So in this example, really what I want to do is create, show you how to create a letterhead for your business. Um, you can use it for other purposes as well, this tutorial, but in this example, we're going to assume that we're running a business and we want to create a letterhead, and we're going to use a lot of the tools in here. I'm going to try and show you as many as possible on how you can use these tools to manipulate the document and do the formatting. So the first thing we want to do is typically when you get a, let, when you get an, a letter sent through the post, and if it's more than one page, Normally the first page will have the company logo and the address but on the second page of the document you won't have the company logo there and you won't have the address there. It's almost like what we call a continuation page. And as default when OpenOffice loads up it's, it's assigned this first page something called the default page. You can see that written down here, the default page. And we want to make this the first page and we're gonna, it's going to have a slightly different format to the, to, to the pages that follow afterwards. So to do this, we need to go to Format and then Styles and Formatting. And inside the Styles and Formatting, we need to select Page Styles from here. It's the fourth tab across Page Styles. And we're going to select First Page. We're going to double click on First Page. So when we double click on First Page, nothing really happens. But if you look carefully at the bottom here, now it says First Page. So anything that we do to this First Page will not be applied to the next set of pages that we generate. Uh, below this particular page and the reason we're doing that is because we want a, a custom header here we want the logo and the address to be here but not on the other pages so the next thing we want to do is go to insert and we want to insert a header but in the header section you can see we've got two options now and we want to insert the header on the first page only so here you can see this little header it doesn't really show you much but we're going to you, you'll understand a bit later in this tutorial while we've done this and we also want to go to insert and footer but we want the footer to be on all we want it to be on all pages so we're going to click all and the next thing we want to do is go to insert manual break 
and in the manual break from the style settings here we want to select default and we're going to click OK now you'll notice on this first page we have a header we have the main content area and we have a footer and on the second page we don't have a header but we have a footer as well because we said we want the footer to be on all pages but we only want the header to be on this first page okay cool so next thing we want to do we can close this styles and formatting for a minute and we just want to look at the interface the basic interface and you'll notice that across the, the side here you've got all of these formatting tools for the font type and the bold italic and the alignments and the bullet lists and so forth but you also have that repeated over here it's almost like a properties panel a quick way of accessing that information as well so these are almost like one of the same thing this is a bit more detailed you've got some spacing and sizing and a few other things here that you don't really have across the top here that are easier to access so really these are almost like copies another way to access that information so you can close that if you don't want it but I would suggest you leave it open it's quite a useful feature to have and when open office loads it will, it will load this as default as well you will see this so whenever I create a document we've done this this small update to the document it's really important that we save our document so I'm going to go to file save as first and I've created a little folder on my computer it's called open office writers beginners tutorial and I've already created a default document in there and it's called master document I've called it that name because we can use this document later we can copy it and we can repeat this without having to repeat this whole process we can use it as a master document so it's quite important that you keep a standard document that you can re-edit afterwards so you can go ahead and call your document you can just name it in here call it master document and this is the file extension for open office called ODT so normally word documents will have a .doc so open office has its own file format extension and that's as default you'll see that file format I'm going to show you how to save this document as different file formats such as PDF files or even save it as a word document later so I'm just going to make a note that we can save it as a word document I'm going to show you how to do that so all I'm going to do is click on this original document that I have, I'm going to overwrite it, but you need to put a correct file name in here. I'm just going to save this. Now, in OpenOffice, we have something called default styles. So we have um, a default style, we have a footer, a header, we have the heading, the heading one, the heading two, the heading three, and the main body. And we want to try and get these ones sorted out. We ain't going to do all of them straight away, but we want to get all of these, we want to get the header, the default, the header, the header one, two, three, and the main body. We want to sort these ones out now, um, and it will make a bit of sense while we're doing this. So let's start off with the header. So in the document here, I'm going to type in title one. This is going to be the main title of the document. So I'm going to select this this title one, and I'm going to go to format, and then styles and formatting. And inside of here, I'm going to click back on. Um, paragraph styles in fact a little an easier way to do this is to is to select the title in the document itself and go to heading one and then go to format styles and it's going to it's going to pre-select it you can see that it's already selected this doc, this particular style and we're going to right click on heading one and we're going to go to modify And inside the modify, what we're going to do is set it to Arial, or you can set it to any font style that you want. We're going to set it to bold, and we're going to set it to 120%. You can check whatever percentage you want, but typically you want this to be quite a large file size, a font size, because it's the main heading. So I'm going to select 120 bold and Arial, and I'm going to click OK. There's many other things that you can do in this section, but we might come back to this a bit later. This is a beginner's tutorial, so really what we're doing here is setting out our font styles. So when we create our document, we can easily format the document quite quickly. So I'm going to click OK. And just change the style of the formatting. And underneath, I'm going to type in Title 2. And I'm going to select Title 2. And I'm going to go to Heading 2 here. And you can see it's a slightly different format. It's, it's a smaller font. And it's, it's in italic format. And I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to right click on this Heading 2. I'm going to go to Modify. And I'm going to set it to be bold only. And it's going to be Arial Bold Size 14. I'm going to click OK. And then we're going to do the Title 3. And I'm going to select Heading 3 from here. And we're just going to check this. It's probably OK already. 
it's aerial 14 and we're going to select 12 this time and we're going to click OK you can change the format the font style that you want whether it's bold or not but I would suggest that the headings be bold and the font size and these are the typical sizes that I use what I'm giving you an example here so now we've got three different types of titles you can imagine this is the main title this is a subtitle and this is a sub subtitle I'm not really using the the main heading one here I'm choosing one two and three because it's easy to remember this is the main title the subtitle and then the sub subtitle you can even have a heading four you can have a heading five six seven eight nine ten but typically three headings is probably enough to do your formatting on your document unless you're formatting a very very large document with many many subheadings this is a bit of big beginner's tutorial so we're just going to use these three formats the next thing we want to do is go underneath and we're going to type in default text and let's just type that right default text and we're going to select the default text and we're going to go here and select default from the option here and we're going to right click on default and we're going to go modify and we, it's going to be set to times roman here so we're going to set it to arial so let's find arial because we want all the, for, all the fonts to be the same on our document and we're going to leave it as regular and we're going to leave it as 12 and we click ok and underneath that we're going to do one more format and that's going to be the text body so we're going to do text body and we're going to select that and then select the text body and we're going to right click on here and we're going to go to modify and it's going to be Arial regular 12 so it's already preset that way that's fine we're going to leave it as it is so now that you've got these all set up you can really delete them you don't need them here anymore but we should really save our document we're going to save it and if I type in something like this is a title for this document if I select it it's already pre-selected header one but I can change it to heading two heading three I can make it the default body text or I can make it the default text up here so I can quickly change the formatting without having to go and select bold the size go and do all of these different options these are like default options pre-selected options to make your life a bit easier and this is a quicker way of formatting the document afterwards it just helps you not having to select Arial, bold, italic, the font size every time you type a piece of text in that you want to format this particular piece of text. So I'm going to leave this title in here for the minute and we're going to say that this is the title for our document and underneath um, I'm going to put in some default text. I'm going to say this is some content for this document. I'm going to put a full stop there. I'm just going to save this and I'm going to select the text and I'm going to press Control C on my keyboard, Control C, which is also the equivalent of copy. But if you remember Control C, that's going to make your life a lot easier. Control C and then I'm going to click on this side of the document. I'm going to put a space in there because after four stops, we always put a space. And I'm going to, in fact, an easier way to do this is to put the space in first and then select the whole text and copy it. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to press Control V just to get some more text in the document. And Control V, if we go to edit, is paste, Control V, paste. So I'm really just putting some content into here so we can format it, we can do some stuff with it. So you can imagine this is the introduction that you wrote for your Word document or your, your letterhead or whatever you might want to write in the document to the customer or to your client, whoever it might be. Now, as default, the document is always left this content is always going to be left left aligned you can see the alignment here left aligned and you can center the text you can write align it or you can block justify it and I typically use block justify a bit like what you see in a newspaper so I'm going to copy this text again and there's another way you can copy it. you can right click and you can select copy here as well that's another way to do it or you can just press Control C and you can right click here and select paste or you can just press control V I prefer to use control C control V it's much easier to remember and it's quicker to work with I put two paragraphs in here for a reason this is like the intro paragraph you could say and then underneath here I'm gonna write in here this is a subtitle for text below 
So you could put any any description in here what this text below is going to be and we're going to select heading 2 for this one. So now we've got some basic format going on here. We've got a main title across the top. We've got some introduction text. We've got a subtitle here with some more introduction text. And in, in this example, um, I want to put an image on the side here. So I'm going to go and find an image now. I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to picture and insert from file. And I'm going to go to my desktop I've got a little folder here I've got a file that I already want to insert this picture here I'm going to click open and you're going to see this image inserted into your document whichever image you, you actually insert yourself and as default it's just gonna it's not really formatted quickly it's just plonked on the middle of the page and you can move it around you can see that you can move it to the bottom you can move it to the you can move it in between the content but typically I you know I would want the image to be on the left hand side or the right hand side and then the text to wrap around the image a bit like what you see in a newspaper for example so to do that I'm going to position this image to the top left and then I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to say wrap um, wrap optimal page wrap here and then what it does is it puts the image on the side and the text down the, the right hand this side down here and you can right click on the image again and you can say alignment align to center or align to right or left and I'm going to say align it to the right and now you can see the image on the right hand side and the text is formatted down the left hand side here and you can't really see the wrapping yet because there's not enough text so I'm going to copy this bit of text here and paste it below and now you can see the text wrapped around the bottom we call this text wrapping so you can just now you can you can just move the document you can move this image around because it's already been defaulted as a wrapping text you can move it and it's going to wrap it around in different positions so you can easily manipulate the image or if you want to quickly align it to the right you just click align to the right and it'll be on the right hand side we're going to leave it on the right hand side in this example I'm going to get rid of a few lines here there's a bit too many lines I just wanted to show you the wrapping of the text now when the image is inserted into your document depending on the file size that you insert the image might be very large so you want to resize that image sometimes sometimes you want to make it a bit smaller or a bit bigger so I'm going to show you how to do that and the wrong way to do it is just to drag it just to drag it straight away you want to hold down the shift key on your keyboard and you want to move to the corner of the image and you're going to hold down the shift key then left click on your mouse and drag the image it's going to constrain the image so that the image doesn't get squashed if you don't do that and you just drag it randomly without holding down the shift key it's going to get squashed like this and we don't want that if you ever make a mistake like this to undo that so to get back to the to the position you was before where the image was showing correctly you can go to edit and undo now you can easily do this as well by using the shortcut key control z control z so if i click on the image and press control z it's going to move it back to its original state and if i do it one more time it's going to move it back to the previous one so it's almost memorized what you did before in the previous steps so that's quite important to understand if you do something to the document and it ain't quite right you can always press ctrl z to undo you can in fact press ctrl y to redo so ctrl z is undo and ctrl y is to redo what you did before so this is a nice feature that you can remember ctrl z and ctrl y or you can go to edit undo and redo from here it's quite quite an important feature that I use quite often and I also use cut paste and copy these features here so try and remember control try and rem memorize these rather than having to right click or always go to the menu control Z control Y control X control C and control V these are quite important shortcuts that will help you a lot in when you're editing documents so now we have a document with an image we have a title a subtitle some description text and we're going to now save this document and we're going to look at manipulating this header so in this header we we would want to put a logo and we would want to put an address on the side with a telephone number so first of all we're going to go and insert um, in fact before we insert it what we're going to do is make some more spaces here so we're going to hit the enter key a few times and we want our logo to be roughly this size in terms of its height so we, now we're going to go to insert picture from a file 
and I've already got my logo here and I'm going to insert that logo here's the logo and the logo is just floating at the moment so we can drag it to the top corner here and we're going to hold down the shift key again and I'm going to resize it so that it sits inside of this grey border you can see this grey border and we can use the control key if we want to move it in increments and if you hold down the alt the um, while you're moving the image using the arrow key so you can you can go left right down up you can use the arrow keys but if you hold down the alt key while using the arrow keys it will move it in smaller increments and just like one pixel increments and you can see this gray border around the logo that's really what I want I want my logo to sit in this header section within this gray border that's what I want so the next thing I want to do is click in this top left hand corner but you need to click outside of the logo so you need to click somewhere like here and you can see the cursor is flashing right here and we want to right align now so we're going to click right align and we're going to put an address down this side so let's just save this quickly and we're going to put an address here so we're going to say something like uh, I'm just going to make the address up so number one road road and it will be in Stratford, London, E15, as, you, as I'm hitting the enter key you can see it's making more spaces below so we're going to sort out these, these blank spaces in a minute. So I've got the address in there and I want to put in a telephone number, normally I separate the telephone number away so I hit the enter key twice to bring it down the line. I'm just going to put in a made up phone number here and then underneath that we may want to put an email in there as well and we'll put in info at so we'll put an email address in here as well and we're going to move our mouse cursor down to this position here the bottom right hand corner and hit the backspace key on the keyboard that's just above the enter key and we're just going to get rid of all of these spaces that we don't want and we're going to save the document one more time. Let's save this. So now we've got a logo, we've got our address in here with the email and the telephone number, we've got a title, we've got this introduction text, we've got a subtitle with some more introduction text, we've got a lo an image on the side here. So we've got a nicely formatted document. Clearly you would put your own information in here, you'd write your own content for the document. Let's save this. Now normally when I create a letterhead, I normally want an, a date on the letterhead as well because we need to the customer needs to know when this was sent and it's good for your own tracking purposes so when you open up this document later you can easily see when the document was sent to the customer so to do that normally I put the date um, above this title so I'm going to go to the left side of the this first word on the title hit the enter key let's just get rid of this hit the enter key, it's going to put this space in here and I'm going to say that I want it to be default text so it's going to reduce the space and in, on this side I'm going to write a line and I'm going to type in the word date and I'm going to say it's the, just make up a date it's the 12th or the 12th, 2013 I will save this as well so to view this document, before you print it there's something called print preview so we can go to file, we've done some work on the documents, so now we can go to file and we can go to print preview. And it's going to show us two documents because this is the intro document or the what we call the first page document with the logo and the, the date and the titles and all this information. And this is the second page, it's blank at the moment, we're going to do some work on this second page afterwards. But when we create this second page you're going to notice the logo and the address won't show because this is going to be like a continuation page. If your document is very long then you're going to continue on to a second page but typically on that continuation page you won't have the logo and the address details only on the first page so I'm going to close this preview click the close button here and we're going to show you some other features of OpenOffice so um, what we're going to do is go down to this second page we're going to leave this blank space in here it doesn't really matter you could have filled it with some other content let's, in this example let's just fill it with a few paragraphs of text Let's just fill it with this paragraph of text here. We we'll save this. And at the beginning of this second document, I want to create another title. 
just like this one. So I can either select this one and copy it and paste it down here or I can type the title in and I'm going to say this is a, another subtitle for this document and I'm going to select the text and I can select the type of formatting from this side so it's going to be a heading 2 so I'm going to double click on it, it might even be a heading 3 now because we've got our first heading, this is heading 1 you can see as you select the type of the text it shows you here what heading type it is this is heading 2 here and then in this in this case let's just make this heading 3 so I'm just going to double click on heading 3 and it will format it straight away another way to do that is to select the text and select it from this drop down menu so there's quite a few ways of doing different things in the word document in this particular document so I'm going to hit enter and in this example this next example I want to show you how to create a bullet list so there's a couple of ways to get access to this bullet list I can either click here on this bullet list or I can click here as well and you'll notice when I hit the bullet so I'm going to click on bullet it's going to make this bullet point and I'm going to type in this is the this is the first bullet point And underneath, when I hit the enter key, it's going to make the next bullet point for me automatically. So I'm going to type in test01, test02, test03. I'm going to do a few of these. Let's just make eight of them. Or well, let's do two. Okay, let's, we'll have these here. And the reason why I've typed in a few of them because I want to show you a few things you can do. So let's just say that this is the first bullet and in the second bullet if you want to indent it you can use this indentation tool and that will just push it to the push it one across. So sometimes you want to have maybe a few of them you can select many of them and you'll have more bullets here and then these two might be these three here might also be indented like this. So you have the main title of the bullet and then the indentations underneath and then the main title and then the indentations. So let's get rid of these indentations. Let's just, we can undo that by highlighting them and then pushing back. And we'll select these bullets and we're going to click on this drop down menu here. And we can have we can have them as different formats, you can see. We can have them as big circles, we can have them as squares, we can have them as arrows. So by selecting this little arrow down here, you can select the type of bullet you want. You can even click on more options and then there's more types of border formatting there's numbering outlining there's this graphic versions here so we could you know you, there's various versions i typically use leave them as um quite a standard bullet these these large style bullets i normally leave them as circles and if we select this one here and then indent it we can just do that quite quickly now there's bullets and then there's a number list so if i select all of these bullets I'm going to copy them and then go down. If I hit the enter, enter key twice, it, it removes the bullet list. So it stops using them as bullets. So I'm going to hit the enter key one more time and it's going to make a space and I'm going to press control V to paste what I've, what I've just copied. And in this case, we're going to select them all and make them now a number list. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And on number two, we can indent it to number two. Like this, very simply. So let's indent a couple of these, like this, and then we're going to select these numbers, and we're going to go to the number formatting, and we have different versions, so it doesn't have to be numbers, or you can have numbers with um, with these little brackets just to separate them, you can have alphabetical A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So these are considered number lists, but they're just in alphabetical order instead. Or we can go to more options, and we can go to numbering, we can go to outlining. And in this outlining section, we can have different types of outlining. So we can have one, 1.1, 1 .1, and then we can have A, and then bullets underneath. We can have all of these different types of formatting. So if we select this one, for example, and we say, okay, now we can see the formatting is changed. Let's try one more other one. Let's try uh, 
let's try this one here one one point one we'll click OK it's not seemed to have taken effect I think because I've already indented them so let's let's put them all back to the original state let's try this let's try it this way around let's just get rid of these we're gonna select everything and we're gonna remove the formatting from here let's just align these back again uh, let's uh, how we can do that let's have a look I'm just getting these back to the original state because that number formatting didn't work very well so I'm just going to check why that was so just imagine we've typed this text in we're going to select the text let's try this again we'll go to this more options and we'll go to this option here and we'll click OK and the formatting is still a bit strange so sometimes you have problems like this you know it's not always going to be perfect and sometimes a bit difficult to work out why it's doing this so there's a few ways to get around this we can undo this edit undo we're going to select it all <clears throat> and we're going to say clear formatting clear formatting here it's going to bring it back to its original raw state now let's try this and now when we indent Still doesn't seem to have worked. Let's try again. Let's see what's going on here. It should really do like one, one point one, one point two. I'm not quite sure why it's not doing that. It's a bit strange. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's slightly different. On this version of open, this is the latest version of Open Office. So let's just do that one more time. Let's let's just select everything in here. Go to clear formatting. Let's get rid of the number list. Let's just make sure clear formatting. So this works a bit differently compared to the last version of Open Office. It's slightly different. So what we do is we'll select everything again. We'll go to more options and we'll select this number list we'll click OK and then you're going to get these options up here and there's indentation but there's also demoting so if I if I use this here it's going to go to 1.1 you can see now 1.1 if I go to this one it will go to 2.1 if I do this one twice it will go to 2.11 or 2.2 I don't know if this makes sense probably this is a bit beyond the scope of our tutorial but sometimes when I'm creating very very complex documents and I need to have a bullet list or, or a number list with many levels of information then I use this numbering system this sometimes helps me to get information formatted correctly so the customer or I can understand how things relate in the list the positioning of these elements this is probably a bit beyond the scope of uh, this beginner tutorial but I worked out how to do it now so you can do that as well let's just stick with a probably a basic number format for now so I'm gonna just get rid of this number format clear it and we'll just use a bog standard number format okay I know that was a bit long-winded but if I don't understand something I like to work out how to fix it put it that way okay let's just save this document so sometimes in a document you want to create a table so let's create a table now and there's a few ways to create a table in this document and we can format the table and sometimes we want to show borders on the table sometimes we don't want to show borders so let's just we'll save that document here is the table insert table and when you click on this you can either click on the this little button here and you can select how many rows you want and how many sorry how many columns on along the along the side here and how many rows you want going downwards so in this case we're going to say we want four going across and two rows 
and we could, I'm going to show you how to add more rows and add more columns. So let's just select this menu for now. And when we do that, it's going to put the table inside of here. I'm just going to save this and I'm going to go to File, Print Preview. Now we can see both documents. And you can see on this second document there's no header. This is what we wanted. And you can see the table here. I'm going to close this and to select a row, when you want to select a row, there's a few ways to do this, but the easiest way to do it is to hover on the outside of the table on the left hand side and this little black arrow is going to pop up and you can then click and it's going to select that row. If you hold down the mouse and drag down using the left mouse button, it will select many rows. And you can do something similar with the columns, so you can select this column or you can select many columns. So that's how you just select the table quite easily. You can select the whole table quickly using that method. So I'm going to select these two rows and there's certain things that we can do in this document. So the first thing to look at really is the the borders and we can we can say we don't want to show any borders. So if I click this top left one, although in the document you can see these faint grey lines, that's for your own visual purpose so that you can see where the table is in the document. You can see these faint grey lines. But if I do the print preview again, you'll see the table is invisible but the content inside the table won't be visible so I can say this is title 1 title 2 let's get this right if I save this now and now do the print preview you'll see the titles are here but the table is invisible. So if we want to show the table again, we'll select these rows and we'll go to table border and then we'll click this option here. There's different variations. There's just show the border around the edge. So it'll only show it around the edge. There's ones where it will show all of the bordering. So you can play around with this. I'm not going to go through every single option. Um, but in this case, I've selected, let's just reselect the table. I've selected this option down here, that means show all borders in all of the cells and around the table. So when we print preview it now, you see the full table here. So typically I would like these titles to be centre aligned in the document and rather than centre aligning each one separately, I'm going to select the whole row and then say centre. And there we go, we've got the centres. I'm going to select the whole row again and make it bold. So now the titles are bold but all of these other ones down the below it are going to be left aligned and unbolded so let's just save this and let's just say that I wanted five rows below we've got one already but I need another four more so I'll click on this left cell here inside the cell and I'm going to say insert row one two three four and one more to make five in total here we've got the five rows now and if we want to get rid of them we can just delete the row we can delete them and if we want to insert a column, let's say that we did this document and we forgot to put a title in there. We wanted title number five and we want title five to be after this fourth title. So we click on this fourth title here in this section here. And we say insert column. It's going to insert it to this side. If we clicked on the second one and insert column, it's going to insert it to the left of the second one. You see? So let's get rid of this one. We can select this column here, right here. And we don't really want that one, we're going to delete it using this red red option. The green is to add, the red is to delete. And you can delete either a column or you can delete a row, one or the other. And in this side section here, I'm going to type in title 5. And when you hover your mouse in between each one of these columns, you can reformat the sizing of each, each column. So I may want the first one to be quite wide. And I may want this one to be more narrow because the information in here is going to be less. And you can format these out um, to however you want them to be in terms of their their widths and their their sizing. You can do the same with the the um, the rows as well. You can make some rows much taller, and you can make other rows much more narrow. So another way to insert a row is to move your mouse cursor to the very last cell and press the tab key. So if you press the tab key, 
and also if you want to tab through the cells if you start in the top one you press the tab key you can see the cursors moving through the cells one by one and when you get to the very last cell and you hit tab it's going to insert another row because you can't tab to the next cell so it's going to make the row for you so that's another feature I use sometimes so let's just put some quick test type data in here so I'm going to put in test 01 I'm going to select it with my mouse copy it and paste it down and I'm going to change this one to test 02 this is just some test information to put in these so we can see the formatting afterwards and I'm going to try and do this a bit quicker I'm going to select it Control C to copy Control V to paste it I'm going to copy and paste this down as well and we'll do this last one I'm going to save this now and let's go to the print preview again and we've got the titles here and we've got the, the information below it and if you don't like that format you can play around with it you can left align the titles if you want you can have them right aligned center you can do many different things to the titles it's entirely your choice and we should be able to select a row and then we should be able to change the background color so we can change it to yellow for example and we, we may just fluctuate these we may make some yellow and some orange so you can uh, distinguish these let's say so you can play around with the background colors add a bit of color to it if you're printing on a black and white printer then I would say just use just leave them white it's probably better to just leave them white but um, if you've got a color printer and you want to change the background colors you can go ahead and do that and you can format them in theory I'm just gonna undo that let's just undo that there we go. Let's just copy this. I think there's a might be a quicker way of doing that actually. Okay, it doesn't matter. We can select all of them, and we just make them all yellow for now. And in the title, we can make that orange, for example. Okay, that's inserting the table, adding rows adding columns changing the background color changing the alignment making these titles bold so that when we print it or we print preview it we can see the color variations in here and those just happen to match sort of my colors or my logo and that was just an example let's say so i'm going to save this now typically when i create a document like this I normally it's very rare for me to send something via post and we've got internet now we've got email and normally I email everything to my customers so I, I type it up in this document and then I save it as a PDF file and then I email it to the customer and then the customer can download it and print it out if they want to print it for their own references so that's normally how I send my documents and with open office you've got this button here it's called export as PDF so I'm going to click this button and in, wherever you saved your document it's going to save the file in the same location. I'm going to click save here and it takes a few seconds so be patient and I'm just going to minimize this for a second and I've got this folder and it saved this PDF file in this folder. So I'm going to open up this PDF file and with this PDF you can select the text but you can't type over the text. It's almost I wouldn't say that you can't manipulate it because there's ways of doing that but what you type in here your customer can't exactly go in and retype something different it is what it is and you can see the different the two different pages we've got the one with the uh, logo and the address details and on the second page our continuation page we don't have that and we've got all the, the information in here so normally I would save it as a PDF file and then I'll attach it to an email and send it to the customer normally when I do a specification something like this that's how I would do that so I'm just going to go back to the document because in a, in a PDF file you can do a few things that you can't really do when you print out the page. If you print this out and put it in a letter in the post then it's, it's a physical document. But in here I'm going to type in um, something like visit this website for more information. I'm going to put two dots here and I'm going to type in www. 
dcpweb.co.uk and then I'm going to select this text and I'm going to click on this hyperlink and if you notice the text here it says text and this is the text that's been selected and in the target I'm going to type in HTTP colon double slash which is very important that first part I'm going to type in www.dcpweb.co.uk and I'm going to click apply and I'm going to click close and then it becomes a real hyperlink so when I save this and I'm going to go PDF and I'm going to overwrite this one select it and I'm going to save it again I'm going to minimize and open up this PDF file now and now I've got a real active hyperlink in the PDF file so if I click on it it's going to say do you want to allow access to this uh, link and I'm going to, this is the Adobe software PDF sorry uh, Adobe reader doing this PDF reader I'm going to click allow and then it's going to load that link into a window so if you want to link to your website or link to a document on the internet or link to some information you can easily add hyperlinks in using that simple method so that, that's something that I do quite often if I want to direct my customer in a document to my portfolio for example then I can add a link to my portfolio I just happen to add one directly to my website here okay let's just have a look at some of these other tools up here and these are also repeated over here some of them and sometimes in a document you've got like a when you when you print out a document or if you're handwriting the document you may want to highlight some information if you're proofreading a document or if you want to emphasize something in your document so let's just say this line here we wanted it to our customer to pay attention to this particular piece of text let's select a couple of lines like these lines here we can use this marker tool it's like highlighting tool and we can highlight it yellow so when we print this document or if we export as a PDF this particular piece of text will be highlighted and you may want to do that for whatever reason you may want to highlight a piece of information to the customer we can also change the font colors normally I don't do this stuff normally I don't highlight this information or um, change the font colors normally I just leave everything black but if you want to change the font color you can pick you know there's hundreds of colors here you can pick, pick green for example but green and white doesn't really work too well let's change it to something like, uh, like this brown color for example and you can change the font, font color if you wanted to if you wanted all of the fonts to be like the whole document to be formatted in that particular font color then you need to do that from your font styles so you need to select the body text modify it and then inside here um, you can change the font color here to a different color I won't do that in, let's just show you that as an example so if I did uh, let's say if I want let's cancel this a second so this is uh, the, the body text let's just remove that formatting so I'm going to select it all and say clear formatting that's a quick way to get rid of all the formatting on the document I can select it again and just justify it and let's just say I want all the text to be a red font, font color I can go to the body text here go to modify go to fonts and effects and inside of here I can select a red color red and click OK so let's uh, go to body text here you can see it's all red and in theory we can go to modify there should be a way of uh, justifying the text might be in positioning here I want to have the text default block justified here so if I go in modify the body is this text body if I right click on it and then go to modify and then go to alignment and select justified and click OK then whenever we type in our, our default text it's always going to be justified like this it's always going to be block justified so that, have, that stops you having to select the text and justify it every time you type something in that's a bit repetitive and boring so that's a quick way to do that I'm going to right click on this modify and get rid of this red I really don't like that red so I'm going to set it to automatic and automatic is always black default black let's just save this so 
let's just see what else we can do. If you want to print the document, you can click on this print button here. And if you've got a printer installed on your computer, then it will give you the option to print out the document. In my case, I don't have a printer on this particular machine. So it's going to try and print it as a PDF file. But typically it will, it will list out all of the different printer options that you have. And you can um, save it or print the actual document, physically print the document if you wanted to. I don't have a printer installed, so it's, always, it's only going to give me the default PDF format. But for yourself, if you have a printer installed, then it will give you the print options. Here you've got page preview. So instead of having to go to file page preview, you can click on this button quickly and see the preview quite quickly. Also, um, with this option checked here, it's called auto spell check. And if I type in something like description, but I spell it wrong. Let's just say I spell it wrong. I can right click on the text and it's going to give me what it thinks that the text should have been and it's got these little wavy lines underneath can you see the little wavy lines here and there's also this other button up here it's called spelling and grammar so let's just click on that and in here in the text language um, there's a difference between the UK and the American spellings so you want to make sure when you're using this this auto detect uh, spell checker that you've either got it set to USA or US depending on what language you're using and if you're using a completely different language like Polish or Italian then you expect to see those options in here because it will default to your language settings so I'm going to leave on UK because that's actually correct my system set up for UK so I don't really need to do anything in here so that's correct I can click close um, and I can right click on here and go to and select description that was the correct word so if you ever see any words in here that have that that funny little um, this little underline, red underline, that means the document, something in here has been, something in here is incorrect in terms of the formatting, the text formatting. Let's just save this. So, with this option here, I hardly ever use this option, but it's called no printing characters. And what that's doing is it's looking through the document and it's showing you it's going to put this little sign or a dot wherever there's a space or there's a carriage return for a new for a new space it's going to show you that formatting there so that's a quick way to look at how the document is formatted uh, to be honest i hardly ever use this i've never used it really but it's there if you ever need it it's an option to just show you the carriage returns and where all the spaces are but for me it's pretty obvious where the spaces are in the document So the last thing I want to show you is let's just imagine that you type this document up in um, open office and you wanted to send this document to someone else but the other person, your colleague or your client um, had Microsoft Office, they didn't have open office. When I go to file save as, it's going to f save it as an ODT file. As default you want to save all your documents in this format, it's quite important because all of the formatting inside of here is going to be much much easier to manage using this file extension so I'm just going to save this as this file format but I can also go to file save as and in the drop down menu I've got other types of formats here so I could even save it as a as a HTML file as a web page if I wanted to but in this example I want to save it as a Word document you've got really old Word documents but I would say Word 97 2000 and XP this is or Word 2000 and 2003 down here but really this is the format that you want to save your Word documents in more than likely if someone has Microsoft Word they'll be able to open it in this particular format this one here and you can see that it's changed it to a .doc if I save this now in my folder so this little pop-up message displayed this document may contain formatting or content that cannot be saved in Microsoft Word file format. Do you want to save the document in this file format anyway? And we're going to say keep current format. Let's see. So here we have a Word document. So I have Microsoft Word installed on my computer. Let's just try and open this document. 
and we'll open it in Word and we'll see what it looks like. This is okay. So we can see it kept most of the format. I don't really use Microsoft Word. Um, but here you can see it's kept all of its formatting. It's pretty good. And we can even print preview that, print preview. And we can see how it's gonna look like on its printed version. And you can see the document pretty much looks the same between Open Office and Microsoft Word. So if you wanted to send that to your customer now, you could do that and they'll be able to open this Microsoft Word document. Um, and manipulate it as well and send it back to you with some edits in it. So I think that's really everything I want to cover in this uh, open office tutorial. I think there's really one thing that we left we, we haven't done yet and that was just this little footer section here. And in this footer section normally what I do is I center align and so I, I use the center align here and I type in my website address www.bcpweb.co.uk so normally I have my little website address here as a clickable link um, it's, it's try to make the first character an uppercase letter so you can just delete that and replace it with a lowercase one then you can select it click on the link tool and we type in the address here the website address click apply click close and you'll notice when we do the print preview now, let's just use this button here. Uh, we've got the website address down here. And we also need to repeat that, that same website address, we should really copy it and put it onto this footer here as well. Paste it here as well. And we're gonna save that. And then when we go to insert manual break, and we're gonna put a break in here for the next page, you'll see that the, the, the address is already here because you put it into this second document here. So if you remember, let's just go to print preview now. We did the formatting for this first page with the header, but on the second page, when I put this link in here, any other page that I create after this page will also have that link as well. So that's what you need to understand. Okay, I think that's everything for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know I've made a few mistakes with this number list and stuff like that. It was a bit confusing, but uh, we live and learn and uh, that's, that's the way it works sometimes. So I hope this gives you a good understanding of how to create these documents. This was a really a beginner's tutorial. There's more advanced things that we can do in this software. We can bring in um, tables and we can bring in other types of content from Excel spreadsheets or the equivalent of Excel spreadsheet would actually be open office calc so in future tutorial that I do I'm going to show you how to bring in charts and bring in other types of content into the system uh, and create other types of formats within this document but this was really just a kickstart tutorial just to get you up to speed on how to format and edit the documents so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial